Back down here at Midcoast 4 wheel drive for another day of the build. Um, we've got a few different things on today. We're starting with a stainless snorkel and airbox from Platinum Mechanical and Suspension. So basically replace the standard airbox that comes with the car um, with a you know custom built stainless one and then stainless snorkel as well. So we've gone for a stainless snorkel this time rather than a plastic one. We've started, well Dino started pulling things apart. What have you done so far? It's pulled the tire off, pulled the guard out. Pulled Wheel the... off, inner guard, the uh, washer bottle that's up inside the inner guard. Yeah. Uh, we've removed the air box, the standard air box. Yeah. We've uh, undone the ECU from the mounts, removed the mounts for the ECU and the air box mounts. Next steps where you're going to be drilling in, you've started mounting up your template and everything there now. Yeah, exactly. We yeah. um, just got to work out where we need to drill through. Where exactly? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make it right. Don't get Don't drill in the wrong spot. Don't Don't be making two holes. We won't be making two holes. <laughs> Get a few details from them. Yeah. And so what we've got, where we're putting it. Obviously, that's going to have to be all cut away. Yeah. When that go in. The whole thing comes with step-by-step -step detailed instructions. Like you've got a three-page booklet here with how to do every single step. Um, but because Dino hasn't done one of these ones before, you know, this is, this is the thing of a custom one. You know, each one obviously has individual differences. Um, we just had to get some pictures off them. I just gave them a call then. They sent through a heap of pictures. So I think we're all good now of what we need to do and where we need to cut. Oh, we've done everything he said, haven't we? Start my air saw in that corner. So you're, you're not going to use a hole saw. You're just going to air saw that whole stencil out. Yeah. Yeah. And you just drill that hole to get it started. Yeah, then we'll get the air saw in and just follow the line. Because that's been double checked by everybody and agreed that that's where it's in the right spot. We got everything marked up. It comes with a template, obviously, that you line the template up. Uh, you put the tape over mark your big cut out because it's a stainless snorkel it kind of all sits in there so that's why you got a big cut dino's just started making the cut now obviously you uh want to get it right you don't want to cut in the wrong spot but yeah we've got all the template everything lined up we've removed everything from the inside out of the way um got all this out of the way as well the reason i've gone to stainless over plastic um it's mainly just a looks thing there's not really I don't really know much difference between the stainless and plastic one. The stainless one will obviously be a little bit more noisy as well, that doesn't really worry me. And then the airbox will be a better quality airbox. You know, it's all welded up, it's all sealed really good, so it'll keep the water and dust out a lot better than the plastic one. It's a little bit scary drilling into the side of the new car, I'm glad I'm not doing it. Whoa. What are you going to drill holes the whole way around? No, just some. Yeah. You just join them up in yeah. the corners where it's hard to get at. That's the inner and outer guard gone. We might have to cut more out. So we'll just try and fit this. Put some air a little bit more out of it. Oh, I think so. While you're here, look at this. 
that's going to go roughly in there. What I'm thinking is I might just take a little bit off of this edge. How's it all looking? Sometime later that day. It's looking like a hole in the gut at the moment. I'm like your own. Okay, see you later. Hang around the whole edge to uh, rust proof. Yeah. Yeah. This snorkel gets mounted on the inside of the hill here, so just drilling out the holes now. Mounted on the inside. They're saying they normally get mounted on the outside, but this one goes on the inside. So, what do they get put in with a big rivet? And there's your uh, nut in there. And then you screw it in. All on. Now time to put the airbox in. So what are you going to do now? I'm not sure. <laughs> Get the instructions out. Yeah. So how are these connections made watertight? Are you putting no, a put Utilux some silicon in there? In the silicon, yeah. Yeah, that'll make it nice and water and airtight. So you got the silicon and the Utilux clip. That's in there. Now connect the other end up to the airbox. No water getting down in there, or dust. Yeah, so you've got to cut that at the, the bend, sort of just below where those two studs are. Okay, yeah, yeah. And then and then those two studs, one will slide, well they both slide through the ECU, but one will slide through the bracket. And the ECU, and we yeah. And as well. Yeah, yep. yeah, I can see and that now. They um, are very helpful, but good memory, because obviously they work with a lot of different model cars. Yeah, I see, so that's... Yeah, we probably all they do is snorkel. Yeah, well, they well they do the mechanical on suspension. They do a lot of suspension work, yeah. and then they do their own custom work, which is mostly snorkels and like intercooler pipes and exhausts and stuff. What had to be relocated was it just the ECU? The ECU and the harness loom. And then we're getting rid of the old washer bottle and replacing that. Correct. Once again, there's no room for anything. Correct. <laughs> Yeah, they have it. Yeah, so I just had to cut that bracket off the old one. Yeah, it's so off the original mounting bracket that was over here. Yeah, they gave you that L plate, and then you got yeah had to cut part of the original mounting bracket to get that mounted up there. We got both snorkel and airbox hooked up now. Uh, it's also in place, a few little large bits and pieces. I've uh, got to put the airflow sensor wiring in. Now this is the old uh, washer bottle that's in the guard, so that doesn't fit anymore. Now the snorkel's in there, so this is the new washer bottle guard. Uh, new washer bottle that gets put down in there, so we've got to install that too. That's the ECU there that had to be moved. It was here, then obviously the snorkel comes inside, uh, down a flexi pipe in the airbox air box then in the engine. So where the, where the ECU is bolted up and there's a black fuse box beside the, the brake reservoir, yep. your pictures show another little thing between the booster and the, and the side of the guard. Yep. Well there's nothing here on this car. Doesn't make sense though. No. I don't know, have you guys done a Series 4 before? This is a Series 4. We've found a couple of other little bits and pieces that have changed on this car that have caused us issues in other installations. Um, no, we haven't fitted a snorkel to a Series 4 yet, no. Yeah, That's so, because we had a couple, we've had a couple of other issues with like the catch can and the rear bar and a few different bits and pieces. I'll keep, keep rocking along and keep going with it. Go on, mate, thank you.
Thanks, mate. Thanks for your help. Cheers. Bye. 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 Bit of effort to make up a washer bottle. Fully like welded up stainless washer bottle. So there's the filter. So how do you how's oh, these have to be oiled, is that right? Some do, some don't. How's it all going down here? It's getting there. There's the new uh, washer bottle up there. And is that an electronic? It just has to be wired up to activate it, obviously, in your car when you turn That's on your switch wire. Yeah. In your switch wire. It's just got to be extended because it's not the same length. It's further down where they've mounted it. So we can't put it there. I wonder if that's going to work. Or tyres and rims now, I don't actually have the rims today, I'm just using the old rims for the moment, my new rims I'm still waiting on, but have the tyres here, we have Nitto trail grapplers I'm going this time, they're a mud terrain tyre in a 28575 on a 16 inch rim. And then with the tyres I'm also putting in an Oricom tyre pressure monitoring system which is just kind of like a replacement valve that goes in uh, and then a Bluetooth sits on the inside of the tyre so it's hidden, it just looks like a normal valve on the outside. And then it relays through Bluetooth through to a little um, monitoring system which you actually sit on your dash and then you can constantly see what all tyre pressures you're at. That way, uh, you know, when you're running lower pressures out of the bush, you can always see what they are. And if you say do get a flat, uh, break the tyre or something out of the bush, you can see it happening and then you'll, you'll get warning sensors go off rather than not knowing and then destroying a whole tyre and rim. 28575s are about a 32.8, 32.9, so just under a 33 inch tyre. Um, we'll fit them up on the car in a minute. Not actually 100% sure whether they'll fit easily. Might have to uh, take those front plastic guard covers off a little bit. We'll, we'll see how we go. 70. So what's the first step? Just uh, pulling off the rim, old rims. Let, let, so, the, let the air out, pull your rims out. Yeah, yeah, factory wheel weights. Get all so, them out. Yeah. What do you reckon on alloy versus steel for operating? It's oh, been bad of both. Yeah, it's a matter of opinion. Steel obviously cheaper, heavier, but if you do bend or break one, you Easy. can knock it back into shape. Yeah. And Whereas that. alloy, the main things are lighter, lighter and stronger, but if you do break one, it's gone. You can't fix it. Yeah, there's no fixing it. So yeah, it seems to be good and bad at both things. The other thing I noticed is alloy rims seem to have a stronger lip. Uh, As in hand? Yeah, stronger lip there compared to steel. Because I know the steel ones, I was often getting like muds and rocks in the lip. Yeah, so Which uh, was causing like a bit of issue. How are you less likely to do that? So I've got both of those. Okay. That's your alloy weight. That's your steel weight. Yeah, you'll see the difference. Yeah, the actual yeah. profile of that bit. Yeah, so the lips on the alloys are a lot, a lot bigger and stronger. Yeah, well, it means it's harder for anything to get in behind it. Except you just run it off the feet. Yeah. So it's just sitting in behind. <coughs> and then you come in with your arm. But these ones are usually pretty good. You cut the old valves off, put new ones on with those sensors. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You want to kick in? Yeah. The reason it's shaped forward, man, it doesn't really take, make it take any longer. They're good. 
a good design in my opinion. They're very, they resemble a factory. Yeah. Factory one. And like it's all, it's all hidden out of the way kind of thing. Well, and then you just got your normal valve on the outside. Yeah. There's nothing you need to like activate before you put them in. They're just turned on, I guess. Well, I just want to, I'd say they're just sending out a Bluetooth signal. Yeah. Once that, that main power unit powers on, it's yeah. it. The only thing is, you check to see if there's an inside and an outside, but mostly with these, the tread pattern's always the same. Yeah, with like a highway. Make sure you get on the right way around, but it's the yeah. same both sides of that one. Definitely a decent sized tyre. Oh. So it's tyre face. Bigger tyres, mud tyres, harder to balance, is that yeah. right? The only saving grace of an alloy in this sense is usually the alloys aren't nearly as warped as what a steel rim is. Yeah. Eight. 16 by 8. Static balance, you'll only knock a weight on the inside. Whereas if you're doing a dynamic, it's a weight on the inside and the outside. So, which you get a better balance out of having dynamic on. So you're doing dynamic balance now. Yeah. yeah, which is the harder one to do because it takes a while to get them balanced down. But it works out better in the end. Well, that for you, it's 70 grams that you need on the outside of the tire and 50 grams on the end. It's probably because there's so much tread there and yeah. so much rubber. Yeah. There's nothing to say that's perfectly circular. Yeah. Most I like to have them out is 10 and 0. Man. 10 here, 0 over there. Regardless, 10 and 0 either right. way. Anything more than 10 grams. 0, out. 0 is awesome, yeah? Yeah. But but it can't be very hard to do. Just see how I just smack 15 on and it still wants 15. Yeah. It's funny, you just go around in circles. You, you don't. can't go putting them all over the top, they've got to be in one place. Yeah. Yeah. You do what it says and then it tells you to do a new thing again, then a new thing again. So you, and just you end up wasting up. a bunch of time, <laughs> which is annoying. <laughs> so see how I try to make them central to that line, yeah. even though they're two different sizes. You really don't want to have excessive weight, because when you start to get real wobble and stuff like that. The issue with tyres not being balanced is mainly wobble and tie wear. Yeah, so it's weird. it will wear your tie down an uneven pattern. Yeah, so a lot of this like drama now is uh, more bigger tyres. You get put it on smaller tyres and these things aren't as difficult for you. Yeah, basically. While Lachlan was finishing off the tyres, the last thing we had to do was the Super Pro adjustable rear sway bar from Fulcrum Suspensions. Fitment with a replacement sway bar. Please note that the sway bar link assembly is not adjusted and block nuts are loose. Each link must be individually adjusted and orientated. The idea behind the adjustable rear sway bar is it's a lot bigger and stronger than the original one that comes with the Navara. And because it is adjustable and longer, basically means that you can realign things in the rear once the lift kit has gone in. And you can also increase or decrease suspension travel and flex as well as body roll. These are obviously a lot stronger looking than these little yeah. things. Yeah. Can you help hold it up while we bolt it up, please? Down. Oh yeah, then you adjust it how you want it. That's coming up and you've also got two more holes to it optional. Yeah. Yeah. 
head set, fold it up, tighten it up, rock nuts done up. It's definitely like uh, heavier duty, better looking gear. Yeah. A lot bigger than the old one. Yeah. 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 It's breathing. Yeah, it's working. Alright. So I was gonna say, once we get it down to the ground, we'll go lock for lock and see where it's gonna scrub. Ah, wait till it goes on the floor and she's a bit scrubby. Yeah, it tears and mud flaps off. She'll be a scrub. That's what I was gonna say. We'll definitely have to say that. We're gonna have to go under out and just cut the rest of it. The whole time, huh? What we've done in the past is heat them yeah. and pull them back with a cable top. So usually you usually just drill a hole in the corner. Yeah. Up here. Yeah. And then, and then burr the rest of that back about half an inch. Alright. Has any The chassis? <laughs> it might might touch when you flip. It may not, because it may come out a bit like as they come up. That's You're off your that. So everything we're worrying about before when it rotates, it automatically update it. Well, when well, you do the system, once you do the rotate, once you do the rotate to come and the, it, yeah, and basically just do a reset on it, so we'll, we'll realise even though that right rear tyre might be at the front left, you yeah. go one, two, three, four, five, and it tells you to deflate right rear, you will know that it's in that position. So you're just making sure it drives nicely. Yeah, yeah, it's just to make sure that the steering wheel. It's still centralised and your car doesn't pull left to right. I don't know if you look at that. Steering pretty straight. Yeah. So, you'll probably find even when you get your new rims, you're probably not going to need a wheel alignment. 